A few years ago, we invited Drew Fithian from Coco Mats to come to PCA headquarters and share with us the quality, all the different various fitments of Coco Mats for Porsches. Today, we're here actually at Coco Mats production facility, and Drew's going to give us an inside peek of how they're made. So come along. And here is Drew himself. Thank you. It's been a few years. Just a couple. How are you doing? Good, good. Well, thank you for inviting us. Uh, it's a beautiful day here in South Carolina. Right. We're going to hang out in here mm -hmm. and learn about how cocoa mats are made. Right. So we've got a couple of things that we want to go through, but you're going to give us a highlight of what's new. We And I think the last time we met or you were at PCA headquarters, that was in 2013. Yeah, about three years ago now. Yeah. So what's been happening? Well, a lot of things have changed since, uh, you know, 2013. Other than, you know, just our general growth in, um, in the business, uh, we've tried to do our best to develop a couple new products. Um, and that's kind of some of the stuff that I wanted to go over with you guys today. It's just some of the new stuff that we're doing, not only with uh, new materials, but also with uh, stuff that we're doing a little bit differently with the mats that we're currently doing. Now, I know when we met last time, we were actually teaching our viewers about how to identify good cocoa mats versus inferior cocoa mats right, right, right. but what i've learned is since january of 2015 there's only one game in town and that's that's yes. your game right? yeah that's us we're pretty much the only show in town anymore um you know what's happened in the market is uh you know we got to the point from being more of like a mom and pop kind of shop and just kind of getting to the next level where we're doing four or five hundred sets a month um and with the uh with the emphasis that we put on quality and uh fitment and construction and customer service above all else um all the other guys that may have been making a couple mats here and there from cocoa material calling themselves cocoa mats they're not around anymore and uh since 96 we're still here and uh we're the last show in town well that's a true testament to the quality and the commitment you have to these mats and you know this is a great story where the best product did survive so i'm very interested to get inside the warehouse take a look at some of the new materials and see how it's made that's right sounds good so this is where it all starts having proper fit for your Porsche. And behind me um, are obviously patterns for various vehicles. I believe Drew told me there are over 3,000 patterns um, that you utilize to make sure that there's a proper fit for the vehicle. But even older cars, even newer cars that have different sound systems or a Targa versus Cabriolet fitment, you make sure that it fits exactly to that car. So when these patterns may be questionable, mm -hmm. A fit. Tell me how you resolve that. Well, really, ultimately, the number one, uh, like I was saying, the most important thing is fitment. Um, so, you know, with earlier cars, especially with uh, earlier Italian and British cars, they vary. Uh, a lot of these cars were handmade. So being that they were handmade, although the chassis may be similar, um, the patterns could be very different. Uh, a lot of that can come down to has the carpeting ever been changed? What's the condition of the uh, uh, matting beneath the carpeting? Um, have the seat rails ever been changed? So what we do with a lot of those customers is uh, we get an order for you know an earlier Italian uh, Ferrari or something like that. Or maybe we have a guy with a 3.6 Porsche uh, that's tubbed it out, completely removed all the carpeting. That's going to change the floors. So what we'll do is we'll actually send a paper copy of our pattern, a full two scale size uh, copy of our pattern. The customer can cut it out, place it in their floors. If it fits perfectly, just give us a call, send us an email, let us know. We'll get right to work on them. If not, they can actually modify those patterns to fit the car however they like, mail them back to us, and we'll custom make them to their specs. So now that you have the proper pattern, proper right. fit, so then what we do is we go into production and this is where we'll actually probably just start taking a walk, sharing with you mm -hmm. how it goes from a raw natural material into the finished product. So let's go. All right. And pull this through. Just uh -huh. like that right there. Oh, and there then I'll come. take and then I'll take and tuck this under so that doesn't come back through. And then you have to look at it and make sure there's no more missing dots. Um, odd pieces like this right here, you want to pull that out because that's a piece of the husk that Drew was telling you about. Yeah. You want most of that hard stuff gone. Like this piece right here, there's another piece that's stuck up. You just reach from the back with my little tweezers here and just pull it through to the back side.
This is how much you hate to show this because this is our showing how, how uh, we're not very automated. We're very old school. I think that's what our folks like. Handcrafted. They are definitely handcrafted. In the U.S., so we have to get our cocoa fibers in it in India. So that's not Take that pattern, lay it down on the material, it goes around, and we trace the exterior of the pattern, just like that, onto the material itself.
Yeah. 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 <laughs> that just covers up any of the blue. I don't know if Drew explained why we do it the way that we did. We can't get the factory grommets to right. um, to fit, or the these in here, they're too wide. So we've come up, this is the actual Audi, Porsche, Volkswagen, this is their little doohick. And so what it allows us, because there's a little bit of room here, it, if we're off by a quarter, but you know, because we're doing it right. like this. They're doing the factories, it's a jig. So when we put this in there, and you can hear it snap, it still snaps in. It gives you a little room to It gives you room sideways to go. Yep, so, you know, in the dry room, again, it's getting dried out. So the Febreze fabric safe gets back onto the material, moisturizes it, brings some of that vibrancy back, takes care of any kind of smells from the process of manufacturing the mats. That's right, baby. Yeah. And that's it. Um, there you go. Let's go, you know.